these secrets are very simple, but it takes discipline to do them, right? So have you been drinking your water, your two liters of water, and exercising at least 30 minutes or more every day? Well, these secrets will keep you healthy and help you to live longer. The first one, of course, was water. The second one is exercise. The third one is love. Love and trust in God. And do you know that when we love others and we trust in God, we'll have better health because love energizes the entire being. And love heals. Did you know that? Love heals. Loves makes, love makes a difference in our physical, our emotional, and our mental health. So we become so much healthier as we have love in our hearts. Loving relationships are part of a healthy lifestyle. So that has to be incorporated into our lifestyle. And what is love? What is love anyway? Love is a commitment, my friends, to always unselfishly seek the very, very best for others. We're not just thinking about ourselves, but we're thinking about others. It's a choice. It's a choice to treat others with kindness, with respect and graciousness, in spite of attitudes that they may have toward us. If someone has hurt us, or they have said things about us that maybe not even are true, but we still treat them with love, with kindness, with respect, and with graciousness. You see, because love is actually a continual choice. It's to treat others the same way that we want to be treated. So think about it in your mind. How would I like others to treat me? Then I want to treat others in that same way. And I can tell you, people all across Africa, we have been so blessed here in Kenya. They have been so loving, so kind, so gracious, so friendly. We are all part of the family of God, and I feel a part of the family here. And you see, love considers the needs of others before our own needs. And when you see this picture, of a mother holding her baby, you recognize that it takes love to get up in the middle of the night to feed that child, to bathe that child, to nurture that child. And so we think about others any friends actually all over the world and that keeps me healthy you keep me healthy because you're so wonderful to us and those relationships at home our family relationships my church relationships all keep us healthy so let's do a few tips for building some loving relationships well first make time for relationships spend time with your family, especially when your children are young. Because if you spend time with them when they're young, they will want to spend time with you when you are older. And I know that's the case in our family. Our children, our grandchildren can't wait until grandma and grandpa come, home, come to their home. Or we can't wait until they come to our home. So build these relationships by spending time, making it a priority to build these relationships. Relationships with church members, relationships with your neighbors and others. Yes, make time. And then cultivate open communion. You know, it's so important to share sometimes how you're feeling. And if someone has hurt you, it's better, rather than internalizing that, to go to them and say, you know, Mary or Jane or whoever it is, you know, you, you hurt me. I wasn't feeling very good about what you said. And then they may respond one or two ways. They may say, oh, I'm so sorry, I did not mean it that way. Or they may say, you know, 
I'm so sorry, would you forgive me? And so it's so important to have open communion, come out open communication, cultivate open communication, and you will find that you will even improve your health. And then focus on others. It's so important to not focus on ourselves. If we think of only ourselves, then we will uh, not be healthy as unless we think about others and focus on their needs. And then speak kindly to people, especially as people get older. You know, some people may be not able to walk as fast. I hope you do because of the fact that you're exercising all the time. But they may be a little slow. Be patient with them. They may not hear as well. They may not see as well. And so you must be patient and speak kindly to them. And that will bring love and healing to your own body. And then it's important to think before acting. You know, have you ever said something and then you think after, I wish I hadn't said that. I wish I hadn't said that. Well, if you, we think before we act, that is so important and that will also stimulate our immune system because we will be sharing love rather than criticism or anger and so think before acting you see love is also healing love is healing in fact Dean Ornish he's a medical doctor He's the founder and the president of the Preventive Medicine Institute in St. Salido, California. And he stated this, this is amazing, this is powerful. He says, love and intimacy are at the root of what makes us sick and what makes us well. What causes sadness and what brings happiness. What makes us suffer and what leads to healing. And if a new drug had the same impact, virtually every doctor in the country would be recommending it for his patients, for their patients. So what he's saying is love and intimacy are so powerful because it can either make us sick or it can make us well. It can either bring happiness or it can bring sadness. And if there was a drug that someone could invent for love, then every doctor in the country should be recommending it for the patients. But then he goes on to say, it would actually be malpractice not to prescribe it. That's how important it is. Yet, with few exceptions, we doctors don't learn much about the healing power of love, intimacy, and trans transformation in our medical training. He's saying, we don't learn about this, but my friends, because we have the laws of health from God himself, and love is one of them, and trust in God, we can prescribe this to people. We can prescribe it also to our patients as physicians. You see, because love has unusual, unusual healing power. In fact, ABC News, May 21, 2015, reported that medical research indicates that loving relationships actually help to reduce blood pressure and the risk of coronary heart disease. Now, we want to be able to reduce the risk of these chronic diseases. They are plaguing the world. They are all around, the, everywhere we travel in the world, they have these diseases. And heart disease is actually uh, very prominent here in, um, in Africa as well. And so we want to reduce or reverse these diseases. And one of the treatments is love. Yes, the healing properties of love transform our physical as well as our emotional health. Now, I want to tell you about a little place called Boys Town. It's in Omaha, Nebraska, in the United States of America, and it's a home for homeless boys. These were troubled boys. They had many problems with them, and so they built this home for these homeless boys. 
And it was a haven of refuge, revealing God's love and also the love for one another. Because they said, at this home, we're going to take these homeless boys, these troubled boys who are always getting into trouble, and we're going to show them love to one another. And it was amazing what happened. In fact, in the front of this home, they have a slogan, they have a monument, and it has a boy, and it's just another boy that he doesn't even know, and it's not his real blood brother, but he's this older boy is carrying a younger boy, and he says, he ain't heavy because he's my brother. And they show love to one another at this home. And this is what has happened. The founder of this boy's town believes that there are no bad boys. There are no bad boys. There are just bad environments and social conditions. So there are no bad boys. We need to teach them. We need to love them and teach them how to love one another. And that's what they do at this home. It's amazing. And the founder of this boy's town said, love can change any life. Love can change any life. It's amazing. And when individuals sense that they are loved, that they are cared for, that they're needed, and they're wanted. The power of love releases positive chemical endorphins in the brain, which actually brings healing to the mind and to the body. So when people feel loved and cared for and needed and wanted, then it's amazing. It changes actually the brain chemicals and they are actually physically better. And Jesus says in John 15, 12, this is my commandment that we love one another as I have loved you. Jesus says, I love you so much that I want you to love one another. You see, 1 John 4, 8 says, God is love. My friends, we don't serve a God that's a tyrant. We don't serve a jealous God. We don't serve a God who is mean, who is, has hatred. No, we serve a God of love. And God loves you unconditionally. And since God's love is the true source of all love and healing, it flows from a, love, a heart of a loving God and faith in Him. Lord is everlasting strength. There's everlasting strength when we trust in the Lord. So loving and trusting leads us from fear to faith. And in a, the book Education by Ellen White, it says this, faith is trusting God, believing that he loves us and he knows what is best for our good. You see, God loves us so much, he wants what's best for us. That's why when we ask him for something and we don't get it, it's probably because it's not for our best good, because what God wants what's best for us. And so faith is trusting God, trusting him for strength in our weakness, trusting him for wisdom in our ignorance, trusting God for courage in our fear, and trusting God to have peace in our anxiety, and trusting God to have hope in our depression and have guidance in our doubt. And yes, God wants us to have joy in our sorrow. So faith, my friends, is trusting God. And universities and public health research has shown that when we have a strong belief in God that we have better 
health. There is no question about it. In fact, research on 1,931 old indicates that those who actually attend religious services regularly have a less lower mortality rate. And research on 1,700 adults found that those who attend religious services were less likely to have elevated levels of interleukin-6, which is an immune substance prevalent in people with chronic disease. So studies, scientific studies, are showing that we actually can live longer when we have love and we accept God's unconditional love. So communicate with him, my friends. Health, happiness, and longevity in life depend on having loving relationships with others and with our Heavenly Father the creator of the universe so trust in divine power it is God's laws of health first Peter 5 7 says casting all your care upon him for he cares for you so courage faith sympathy love promote health and prolong life Jesus is an understanding friend who continually identifies with us so think about the fact that there will only be love in the entire universe made new. So I want to share this statement with you from Great Controversy. And as the years of eternity as they roll will bring richer and more glorious revelations of God and of Christ. As knowledge is progressive, so will love, reverence, and happiness increase. The more we learn of God, the greater will be their admiration for his character. The great controversy is ended. It's ended, my friends. Sin and sinners are no more. The entire universe is clean, and one pulse of harmony and gladness beats through the vast creation. From him who created all things flow life and light and gladness. And through the realms of illuminable space, from the minutest aspect, from the minutest atom to the greatest world, all things so animate and, and the great controversy in their unshadowed beauty and perfect joy declare that God is love. So in the end, when the great controversy is ended, everyone will declare that God is love. Love is a gift from God that has wonderful healing power. So daily, my friends, remind yourself that God cares for you. He loves you. He cares for you. And so here is your prescription for tonight. Read Psalm 23, that beautiful psalm of the Lord is my shepherd. And then Psalm 46, God is our refuge and strength a very present help in trouble. Therefore, we will not fear, even though the earth be removed and though the mountains be carried into the midst of the sea. So remember your prescription, Psalm 23 and 46. And now here are my teeny tips for you tonight. Accept God's unconditional love. He loves you unconditionally, and all you need to do is reach out and take it. And believe the best about others. Believe the best about others. Build relationships with others. Cultivate healthy relationships. And develop the ability to see people's needs and to fill those needs. And every day, practice deeds of kindness. And when we do that, my friends, you will find you will have a healthier life because what a friend we have in Jesus. I love that song. What a friend we have in Jesus. All, all our sins and griefs to bear. What a privilege to carry everything to God in prayer. And so may God bless you, my friends, as you carry out the laws of health, and one of them being love and trust in God. God bless you.